Aloha and welcome to Inside Hawaii Real Estate. I'm Will Tanaka with my co-host, business partner and wife, Vioni Lam. Thanks, Will. Together as full-time realtors, we're bringing you the latest in Hawaii real estate. So our guest today is Spencer Lee. Spencer is a senior vice president of JL Capital, which is a real estate and private equity firm who's currently working to develop and transform the urban Ala Moana area. And they're going to be doing that by developing and building residential hospitality and even mixed use commercial space. All of this is going to happen over the next couple of decades. So welcome, Spencer. Hi, thank you for having me. Excited to be here. Thanks for being with us, Spencer. So let's start with that. So, you know, with regard to Jail Capital and the vision for Ala Moana, can you kind of share what's envisioned and what's going to be coming over the next couple of decades? Yeah, sure. Um, so I just recently joined JL Capital, and um, like Leonie said, we're a real estate development firm. Uh, we're a very prominent landowner in the Ala Moana community, second only behind Ala Moana Mall. Um, so we own quite a few parcels in Ala Moana, and uh, those parcels are uh, our pipeline, essentially, for high-rise towers that we're going to be building over the next 10, 20 years, which will include thousands of units. Um, most of them will be residential. They'll be uh, for sale, there'll be affordable units, there'll be um, you know, hotel style units, condo hotel, uh, commercial, uh, so mixed use towers um, all along the Ala Moana neighborhood. Um, we really envision Ala Moana to be um, you know, its own neighborhood with the um, you know, monkey pod trees all along Kapilani Boulevard. Um, it's, a, it's a very exciting area, it's up and coming. Um, you know, it's right next to the mall, so the location is great. Um, and we think there's just a lot of desirability for housing units in this area. Excellent. That sounds like some big plans coming forward. We're super excited. So in that development, you know, that you're kind of describing just now, you mentioned affordable housing. So affordable housing in Hawaii is, you know, something that we hear about all the time on the news and just in, in conversation and all of that. If you do like a Google search about affordable housing, you'll see like a city and county of Honolulu website that's dedicated to information on affordable housing. I saw detailed information about how to qualify. There's um, affordable rentals and things like that. So for you, what is affordable housing, like in your words, if you could kind of describe um, what you think that is and also like, why do you carry so much passion for affordable housing? Yeah, um, well, yeah, thanks for the question. Affordable housing is very, very important to me. Um, I currently teach the affordable housing class for the Honolulu Board of Realtors. It's called HOPE. Housing opportunities are possible for everyone. Um, and previously, uh, I used to work for a local bank and I did hundreds of uh, affordable housing eligibility checks for buyers um, to see if they were eligible to qualify and buy uh, a for sale affordable housing unit. Um, so I'm very passionate about the topic. And the reason why I'm very passionate is because, well, first of all, we all need housing. Um, it's critical for everybody. We spend most of our life in our house or, you know, we're attached to it. Um, and it's very, very expensive in Hawaii. Um, there's a lot of reasons for that. Um, and everybody agrees that it's a very important issue, but there's no single solution. Uh, everybody has an opinion um, and it's a very complex issue. So there's a lot of stakeholders. There's, you know, many, many people who are involved with the regulations with the building um, and but it affects everybody so you know I found that it was very important for me to spend my time to explain the issue to people um, in a way that you know makes sense and that people can relate to and by understanding and just having more information about the topic um, you know I think that people can just take advantage of all the different affordable housing opportunities out there. Um, so that's why I, you know, I'm so interested in the topic. Um, as far as like, what is affordable housing? Um, there's kind of three main pieces to it. You know, the first is that it's housing that is lower priced than regular market units. So market units, of course, are just regular homes and apartments, condos that sell. Um, with no price restriction, but affordable housing does have a price restriction. 
So when developers build um, a large project, they are required to build affordable units. Uh, it's called inclusionary zoning, and that's where they're required to include uh, either affordable rental or affordable for sale units as part of their development. Um, you know, it can range anywhere between you know 10 percent, 20, all the way to 51 percent um, of their project has to be affordable. And again, those are sold at below market prices. Um, the goal of affordable housing is to get people into the units and buy these units when they might not otherwise be able to afford them. So it's not intended for the lowest uh, income group um, because there's different programs for them, typically affordable rental um, programs for uh, the lowest income earners. And once you're in the higher income earner brackets, then the idea is that you would just go and buy a market unit. So affordable for sale housing is targeting the people who are in the middle, um, the missing middle, if you will, this gap group of people who want to buy housing in Hawaii, but are just a little bit short on money. Um, maybe the income's a little shorter, maybe the down payment's a little uh, smaller than what's required for a market unit. So affordable housing programs are really targeting them to get on the housing ladder if they weren't able to get onto that ladder by themselves. So um, yeah, the third piece is that it's not for everybody, it's really for the people in the middle. That's a really good perspective, Spencer, because we do have clients who are making more money than you would think, um, but and then they qualify for affordable. And then on the other hand, we have lower income clients that they couldn't even have, um, qualify for some of the affordable units for purchase in some of the newer developments. So is there, in, in terms of like an income threshold, I think we uh, heard about a AMIs. So for our viewers, what is this middle income level or AMI? And can we kind of dig into a little bit more of that? AMI stands for Area Median Income. So uh, the government, uh, whether it be you know HUD, uh, Housing, Urban uh, Development, or the city and county, they have uh, these income charts where they determine what the area median income is for um, our island, our county, and then uh, what they do is they they take you know a percentage of that uh, as well as a factor of the household size. So if the area median income is 100% for a household of four and it's at this number, then they'll say, okay, well, 80% of that or 60% of that is um, you know, a certain level. And then they go to 120, 140. So um, I did bring a chart and um, in the city and county of Honolulu, um, if you're a single person at the 80% AMI level, that's at 78,000. Um, so this is income for all of the income earners in the household. Okay, so if you have two people, of course, they would add the two uh, amounts together. Um, and then when you go up to the um, 140 income level, um, you're going to be at about 175,000. That's for the um, HHFDC level. Um, so actually that's that's for the group of three so one person at 140 percent is 136,000 um, but as your household gets bigger then that amount of uh, area median income increases so again it's based on household size but somewhere between 80,000 to you know 175,000 depending on your household size is considered the target uh, group um, and if you're in that group, then you might qualify for affordable housing. Um, now, income is just one component. Sometimes there's a max asset cap. Um, of course, you have to uh, reside in the state of Hawaii. Um, typically, you can't have owned property in the last three years. Uh, depending on the program, uh, maybe you just can't own property now. Um, and also, you shouldn't have already have uh, benefited from an affordable housing program. Um, so they don't want people to, you know, use the affordable housing benefit, sell the home, and then come back and buy another affordable housing unit. So you're saying that a uh, you don't have to be a true first-time home buyer. They could have owned a home 
you know, five years ago, they sold it. It's been, you know, four years and they, they could qualify as a first time home purchaser under the program. Yes. So the most strict rules is uh, you can't have owned a home in the last three years. Um, if you owned it in the last three years, you would not be designating. Uh, you would not be deemed a first time home buyer. Um, mm -hmm. There is one other program where you just can't have you can't own a home at the time of application. So sometimes the more the, the more lenient program is just you can't own a home now. And the more strict version is you can't have owned a home in the last three years. So got all good information, I think, um, to help kind of clarify. So, I mean, it really depends on the purchaser's income, whether or not they owned, and there's specific criteria designated for all of that via the AMI is kind of what you're saying in a nutshell, right? And then regarding affordable housing, I mean, what are the common myths that you hear about about that topic in general, or what do you hear from people? I would say the most common thing that I hear uh, is that affordable housing is not affordable. Um, you know, there's a lot that goes into that. And again, I, I think it's just because housing prices are so expensive already to begin with. So for example, um, you know, in the urban core of Honolulu, if you're looking for a one bedroom condo, um, you know, you're probably looking at the 700,000 range. Um, now, of course, that's going to vary on exact location, amenities, view, square footage, but you're looking at roughly that number, you know, just to get your, your one bedroom in the core of Honolulu. Um, so if you just start with that, um, and you think to yourself, okay, well, if that's the market price and maybe the affordable units might be five or 600,000, you know, you can see that it is below market price, but it's still expensive. Um, so the, again, the idea is not to give away homes, affordable housing. That's not the intention. It's really to tell people, hey, if you can't afford it at the market price, maybe we can get you something a little bit lower. Um, but yes, in Hawaii, it, it is definitely still expensive. Um, you know, we can talk later on if you're interested about how they got to those prices. Um, but that's probably the most, you know, the biggest thing that I hear. Also, you know, I hear a lot that, um, that the, uh, you know, our politicians are trying to do anything about housing. Um, you know, I can tell you that they are. Uh, I talked to, you know, a lot of our council members um, and state folks, but the, the problem is, is that there's just no easy solution. And a lot of people have different ideas about, um, you know, how to, how to solve the problem. Um, there's no silver bullet. There's just a lot of, uh, a lot that goes into it. Um, and, you know, we have to remember as well that the developers are not going to build housing when they lose money, you know, at it. So construction costs are astronomical, labor costs are astronomical, land costs are astronomical. So just to build these units, um, you know, the developers will have to make some money or at least, you know, be, know that they're not going to lose money. Um, and and that's, a, that's a really big factor. Uh, as to why housing prices are so expensive um, is just because um, it's very, very expensive to, to build these units. Uh, so th those are the common myths. And yeah, I mean, it's it's been a hot topic even more so over the last three or four years, ever since COVID. And, you know, people are always talking about uh, affordable housing throughout all, all islands. So in terms of... Um, I remember there. Uh, I read something about the ratio, the, the debt to income, or the, like the ratio of monthly mortgage to their income. And I remember when I first bought my house, I want to say that the mortgage was probably like fifty percent or something. <laughs> I'm like, I, I, I don't know, um, but it, it was pretty high percentage overall. What is the, I guess, the average ratio of you know, the a family or uh, professionals income versus the mortgage. And I mean, is a solution, you know, more houses, more money. It's, I mean, what's your personal thoughts on that? It, and, you know, what is, what do you think, um, your, your firm will be doing to, 
to help? Because I mean, th there is no one solution. Otherwise, I think someone would have figured it out, right? Well, let's see. Our uh, percentage of you know people in our community who own homes uh, in Hawaii is much lower than the rest of the country um, because housing prices are so high. Um, and typically here in Hawaii to even buy a home, um, most folks need to kind of pool their money together, either um, you know with their partner or save a long time, or you know maybe get gifts from their their parents to you know either for the down payment or to keep that mortgage lower. Um, so typically lenders will not give you a loan if your debt to income ratio exceeds fifty percent. Um, and just to put that into you know everyday terms. You know, if your income or family income is, let's say, husband and wife together make ten thousand dollars a month, um, then your debt to income ratio, say your monthly debts, should not exceed five thousand dollars. That would be fifty percent, five thousand of ten. Uh, you know, out of ten thousand. Um, and yeah, a lot of people are pushing that limit. You know, to to buy their first home is they'll be right at that limit, or you know, kind of squeaking just under it. Um, so it is. It, when your monthly housing payments are that high of a ratio in you know relative to your income, then that doesn't leave you with much for your gas, your taxes, your um, cell phone bill, like all of your day-to-day -day living expenses. So it most people are stretching in Hawaii much more so than on the mainland. As far as my you know personal belief about like what to do about that, you know I I think that most people understand that adding supply will lower housing prices. So, you know, just to kind of have this mental exercise, let, let's think, um, what do you guys think would happen if every month the housing supply of one condo building went away and those people who lived in that condo building had to go find other housing? So every month, you know, maybe a hundred condos would get taken away and then next month, another hundred condos would get taken away. And those hundreds and hundreds of people had to go out and go find new housing, I think we all know that housing prices would increase, right? There'd be a greater demand for the existing housing supply. So rents would go up and those people would bid up rents, they would go bid up the existing housing inventory. So if we take the inverse of that and we made one new building a month, what do you guys think would happen? There'd be extra supply and you know the people who are looking around would have a lot of choices to choose from. And I think that landlords who rented units would have to offer those rents at lower prices. I think that developers who were selling those units would have to offer those units at lower prices just to get them sold. So it's just a easy way to conceptualize that if we want housing prices to go down, we have to build more supply. That's the only way to do it. And you know, I, I do work for a local developer who is trying to build supply. Um, it is very difficult to uh, build supply because of the regulations. It's it's mm -hmm. very uncertain. Um, you know what is going to be the requirements that developers have to you know the hoops we have to jump through to uh, build a new condo project. That is very unfortunate. Um, that there's no right to build. Uh, basically, you have to. Um, you know, buy the land and then go ask for the uh, entitlements where we go ask the, you know, local government for what's required to build a project. And they'll tell us at that time, but we don't know going into it. So that's a huge variable. And there's a lot of costs associated with that. And if it doesn't pencil, well, we only find that out later. Right. So because of that huge risk, you know, developers are very, very slow to build new housing supply. Um, mm. You know, there's a lot of other reasons. Again, housing costs, construction costs, material costs, um, all of those things, you know, increase somewhere in the order of 50 to 75 percent since COVID. Just like, you know, our housing prices, the average house price has gone up, you know, significantly since pre-COVID to now. Um, our grocery bills have gone up significantly. Um, it's all the same, right? Um, it, all everything has just gone up. So it it, it is very difficult, but. Again, I think we just need to build more supply. You know, just kind of going backwards a little bit to what you were sharing regarding, you know, purchasing a home, whether it's affordable or whatever, but coming up with a down payment, you know, you kind of alluded to that a little bit. 
And you're saying that, you know, oftentimes, and we've seen it, where partners come together, they kind of pool their money, they save their money, or sometimes families will help them or whoever parents to get them to come up with this enormous down payment to purchase. But I guess now, or, you know, the city and county has this down payment program. Do you want to share more about that? Because maybe people don't know about that. Yeah, there's three three uh, affordable housing programs that you know I can highlight right now. The first is the down payment um, assistance loan program by the city and county of Honolulu. Um, you have to be below 80% AMI. That's the big requirement. If you do qualify, then they'll let you borrow $40,000 um, as a uh, you know 0% interest loan. It's amortized over 20 years. So $40,000 at 0% interest is $166 a month. Um, you can apply that toward the down payment. And uh, what's great about this program is that if you do make your payments on time for the first 10 years with no late payments, then they'll forgive the balance. Um, so basically half of it is forgiven. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's very good. Um, here's the flyer that you guys can find you know, online, Blandiardi. Um, okay. <laughs> the, uh, the next program is the mortgage credit certificate program that's uh, put on by the HHFDC. And um, with that program, buyers can get 20% um, of the mortgage interest that they paid in the prior year as a federal tax credit, uh, which is much better than a federal um, tax deduction because a credit is dollar for dollar. So for example, if you paid $10,000, uh, in mortgage interest last year in 2023, when you go file your taxes in 2024, you would get $2,000 as a federal tax credit. Again, because $2,000 is 20% of the 10,000 you paid in mortgage interest. Um, and that goes on. Um, uh, so that, that's a great program. There are max income caps. There are max purchase price caps. Um, on the unit that, that you're buying. And the third program is the new uh, HHFDC uh, DEP program that stands for DERF Equity Pilot. Um, and that's a program that the HHFDC came out with to help individuals uh, stay in Hawaii, uh, individuals specifically in an industry that has a labor shortage. So that includes um, healthcare workers, educators, law enforcement, and agricultural workers. Um, and if you qualify, um, you know, if you're, you have one of those employment types, then the HHFDC will uh, give you a 0%, um, you know, second mortgage that you can apply toward the purchase price of your unit. Um, payments are deferred. So there's actually no monthly payments uh, on that amount. Um, you know, we're currently selling Sky Alamona flat units, uh, and on those studios, they're giving 20% of the purchase price um, as a 0% no payment loan. And the caveat is when you do sell the home, um, you would have to pay back uh, that amount that you borrowed, uh, plus some uh, appreciation that, um, you know, if you sell the unit for more than what you bought it for, then you'd have to share some of that appreciation. Um, it's a great program, and again, it's it's really intended to keep uh, people on the island if they're in um, an industry that has a labor shortage. So there's shared appreciation, and then I know there's also restrictions on selling the home within a certain period of time. Yeah, actually, the restriction on our Sky Flat units are because they're city and county affordable units. So mm -hmm. you, you have to live in there for ten years. Um, the the um, occupancy requirement is not due to the DEP program. It's due to the fact that it's a city and county affordable unit. Yeah, these units are very affordable. For example, our studios we're selling that include parking are roughly $330,000 um, across the street from Alamoana Mall. Um, so it's very, very affordable. And you know, if you do qualify for the DEP program, 20% of that is roughly $66,000 that you would get as a you know, interest-free loan from the HHFDC. So you would just be responsible for paying the rest of the 80%, um, mm. which comes out to yeah, roughly $270,000, but you can go to a bank and borrow that. Well, this has been like super jam-packed, uh, wealth of information. And is, is there any last words that you would like to share on, you know, 
from you, JL Capital, or anything about the future of Ala Moana, because this has been fantastic, affordable housing, just excited about you know what's to come over the next couple of decades. I encourage people to look into affordable housing programs. Um, you know, most people I would say do qualify for affordable housing, um, but a lot of people just kind of discount it and they say that it's not for me. Um, when actuality, I think a lot of people would qualify. Um, I'd encourage more real estate agents, um, loan officers, and other folks in the industry to share the word um, about affordable housing to their clients, um, because a lot of times their clients don't even know to ask. Um, and um, yeah, I, I would just recommend that people get educated about it as much as possible. Um, ask around and look for those affordable housing options that are out there. Well, thank you so much for spending time with us and for explaining that there are options out there and programs available to people who are looking at affordable housing and for kind of defining what affordable housing is, you know, in specific, more specifically, right? Like where it's kind of addressing the gap group and kind of addressing the myths and things that we hear across the board. So we really appreciate your time so much and thank you for being with us. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. You were awesome, Spencer. Thank you so much. And mahalo. Thanks. Mahalo.